So you're the founder and CEO of House of Tara International. Mm -hmm. You are a pioneer in the beauty and makeup industry in South Africa, in Nigeria. <laughs> I'm, you know I'm trying to get you to come to South Africa. Yes, with, yes. I love your product. <laughs> um, what has been the most challenging experience as an entrepreneur for you? And what can you share with other hmm. aspirant entrepreneurs? I've had many, I think, at different stages and the yeah. good stage of the business, there are different challenges. But one challenge that I've experienced, whether I was, if it didn't happen in the growth stage or happen in the startup stage, it's something I would never forget and still has a strong impression on me. And it was when my products were counterfeited in China. Yeah. And wow. And I remember going uh, on a business trip to China and I went to an open market and a lady recognized my accent that I was Nigerian and asked me if I was interested in Tara products. And I, hmm. I, was, I was shocked. Especially since you know you're not exporting. Yes, to, the to China, right. And, and, she, and she felt a need to convince me. And so she took me into her store and uh, brought out her books, her receipt booklets to show me how great the product was and how much they were exporting to places like Congo, Cameroon, and I was, it was like my world was coming to an end at that very moment, because when you've built a brand and through with uh, sweat and blood, you, you feel like it's you, it's a part of, it's such a part of who you are. And to just have that one person taking advantage of that, it was heartbreaking. And of course, the Nigerian market was completely flooded by that. We lost um, wow. a lot of revenue based on that as well, because now the price was like half and the packaging was almost exactly the same. Like, it was difficult for, for people to be able to tell the difference in terms of the packaging. Um, and that was one season where we, we decided to think about how could we fix this problem? And we realized the problem was bigger than, than what one company could do. Uh, we engaged the government, and of course, coming from a country like Nigeria, where regulators don't do what they're supposed to do, uh, our business really, really suffered. Um, we suffered. Um, decline and you know you're competing with yourself in the market where people are buying Tara because they think it's Tara and it's not really Tara but then they've bought Tara um, and it's one of the most challenging seasons and and, and I, I'd like to talk to aspiring uh, um, entrepreneurs to say resilience and having a, a very very strong capacity to manage challenges is one of the strongest skills that entrepreneurs need to have. Your mental health is so important and you have to surround yourself with a lot of positivity um, because when you go through these sort of traumatic seasons, whether it's it's fraud in your business or whether it's counterfeiting um, in, 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 you know, in our own space or it's government regulations that have just suddenly changed overnight um, or it's double taxing in our case where you know we're taxed federal level, state level, local government level. It's ridiculous, right? And you keep doing this and keep trying as hard as you can. You're hit with all these challenges day in, day out. Um, you've got to be mentally strong. And, yeah. and so I'd say to entrepreneurs, learn any, everything you need to learn in business school, but remember that your mental state um, it's going to be one of the things that help, helps you to protect you um, to stay resilient in tough times.